It's a bush light kind of night, boys. Well, this is a different video. This is a, we're giving you guys a vlog today. We're doing something a little bit different. We're gonna go do a little project in the garage. You find them? Oh, well, golden, go. golden. This is what's on the schedule for tonight. I'm just gonna throw those down there. All right, so if you guys watched one of my videos like a while back, I made a video on how you could make a portable live well and I did it out of this giant cooler. I ended up using this cooler for one of the bass fishing tournaments that me and Tony did and it worked great, but it's kind of obnoxious and it's unnecessary. So I'm taking this thing apart and we're gonna be putting in a homemade live well in my homemade mini bass boat. So if you guys haven't seen the build for this boat and you're curious how I did this entire thing, this is actually a 1955 Alumacraft. I basically turned this thing from zero to hero in a matter of a week. So if you guys are interested in looking at that video, you can hit the link in the description down below. I thought I would share this with you guys because I'm probably not the only one who's tried to do something like this. If all this goes right, this live well will only cost me like 30 bucks to put in this boat right here and it will be fully functional with like an aerator and all that so that's exactly what we're going to be doing today uh this is my friend alexis she's she's just helped me out yeah i don't know this is literally bush light engineering today i did not plan this i'm just winging the whole thing and if it works maybe it'll be a good idea for you guys so welcome back and uh let's put a live wall on my boat so first things first, before I show you guys how I'm going to make this, I actually have to take apart the old live well. I'm gonna use the same system that I had put in here because it's already done and I'm pretty much not gonna be using this anymore because I'm getting rid of my big boat. So we're gonna take this thing out first and then I'll show you guys exactly what you're gonna to need to do this project and you know all, all the pieces that I got, where I got it from, you know the deal. So I'm gonna yank that bilge pump out of there and then I'll meet back up with you guys in a second. Alrighty, we are gonna get started here. All you guys are gonna to need to do this project is obviously gonna be your John boat or your bass boat, a big container to hold water, a bilge pump, a PVC elbow with two pipe straps right here. If you guys are curious, the container that I use that perfectly fit my 14 foot aluminum boat, I lied, it doesn't perfectly fit, but we're gonna to get to that in a second. But it's pretty darn close. This is a 68 quart. Plano medium automotive trunk. This bin was like $19 at Walmart, something like that, it was like 20 bucks. We're going to be installing this into the boat here today and we're gonna be using the bilge pump for the aeration system. I'm gonna show you guys everything that I'm doing today, but everything that I do is going to have to be customized to an extent. There's nothing that just fits perfectly. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna tackle that right now, I'll show you guys what we're doing, but uh, it's, a little, it's a little rigged, but it works. All right, so I have my bin here and this compartment originally, what the hell? All right, so this compartment originally was meant to be for tackle. Turns out I never end up using it for tackle and I'm actually fishing a little YouTube John Boat tournament this weekend and I need a live well for it. So that's kind of why I ended up doing all this. So what we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna be taking this Plano and we're gonna be installing it in here so it fits almost perfectly but the issue that we're running into is the fact that it will not fit flush so i'm going to have to trim pretty much the top layer of this bin off and i think i'm going to do that with a knife and a blowtorch so i don't recommend you guys doing this you have a better way to do it but so we're going to pull this thing out and i'm going to make marks on it and just heat and cut the whole rim off and hope that that fits good enough to where I can still mount it. All right, so after like analyzing and, and trying to figure out the best way to cut this thing down and do this, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut along this edge right here. So if you guys are in this position and you need to cut some plastic and you don't have materials to do it, this is an easy way to do it. Again, make sure you have like proper ventilation and stuff because it's kind of not very healthy, but we're gonna go back to a thousand degree knife days and we're gonna take a blowtorch, we're gonna heat up the knife and I'm just gonna stick this guy through and try to follow this whole inner edge. And hopefully that'll leave me enough so I can still mount this thing down. Turn off my blowtorch and we're just gonna just 
slowly cut. I'm gonna have to get that knife a lot hotter though. But as you guys can see, it cuts that, not perfectly, you know, it ain't gonna be the straightest cut ever, but it'll do it. So we're just gonna do that around the whole edge and go from there. This is what happens when you make trial and error videos. I, I show you guys everything just because I don't really care. Ideally, if I had my tools with me and they weren't all boxed up in a garage waiting to move to the next house, I'd be using a small little disc Dremel and I'd be following the edge and it would cut. Um, there are probably better ways. You guys can leave a comment down below if you have a better way. All my roommate has is like this, this like drywall cutter or this wood cutter for a Dremel, so it's not ideal. It works. I mean, at the end of the day, we're just trying to get the lip off of this piece of plastic. There's, You could use a grinder if you wanted to with a cutting blade. I just don't have access to the tools right now, so we're gonna use this thing. It's gonna take a little bit longer than I wanted to, but it is what it is. We need to just get moving and get this thing fitted so that we can fit it in there. So again, if you're watching this video, all you sticklers in the comment section down below, I understand this isn't ideal, but I'm working with what I got. So whatever, I just grabbed something. I'm gonna cut this thing off. I don't care about it being perfect. I don't care about doing it the 100% right way. I just want you guys to know if you're not gonna do it the correct way like I am, then just be safe. That's it. So we're gonna time lapse you guys. I'm gonna cut this top off and I'll see you in a minute. All right, folks. Well, four score and seven years later with the worst ideas I've ever had. We got the top rim off. Not the prettiest job ever. We sanded it down a little bit. What's important is it fits in there and it closes. So we're gonna mount that bin and get the bilge pump installed. And I'll show you guys how I do that. At this point, you might not even be watching this. You might be thinking like, oh, this guy's just a complete amateur. You know what? I'm, I promise you guys, this is gonna be legit. Just give me a minute. Just so you guys know, watching this video, this is a 14 foot electric John boat. So this boat isn't hauling on plane where like I gotta worry about water flowing or anything like that. This John boat was specifically designed for electric lakes. So I'm only going five miles an hour in this thing and it's just it's just a little putz around thing and it's, it's nice that I have a light well just for the heck of it, so. This is what we're working with so far right here so now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take this little downspout I made and we're gonna mount this right here so that we have airflow now the point of what I'm doing here with the bilge pump is I'm not mounting this at all because I actually want to be able to take this in and out to be able to fill it up and put it back in and use it for an aeration system so I'm gonna show you guys how this all works when we're done here. I'll actually fill it up with some water, but let's get the downspout mounted in so I can show you guys how this whole thing is gonna work. I'm hoping and praying it's deep enough. This was as deep as I could go. The cooler's not much deeper, so it should be fine. This is a, I think it'll be solid. So I'm gonna mount this spout and then I'll show you guys how it works. So as you guys can see here, I have this in here. It looks a little crappy, I know, but Oh, oh, this is like really. All right, all right, I'll take it off. <laughs> all right, anyways, we got the live well filling up. No, did I? I don't, apparently, I don't know how to use a hose. God bless it. Look at the pressure. Look at the pressure. Alrighty guys, so if you guys want to know why this has been such a catastrophe, it's literally like one o'clock in the morning. But we have this thing rigged up, we finally have it filled up. I have this thing wired into a small rechargeable battery. Those are what I use. I've used them before. I used them in tournaments before and they work great. They'll last the whole day. I wired it into a switch here. So now that we're done, I'll show you guys how this thing is. We have this guy filled up in here. And I didn't fill it up all the way just because I'm in the garage, but we flip a switch. And voila, we have ourselves a roaring live well.
nice and quiet. Look at that. So now if you open it up, I have myself a live well. Now, for those of you who are wondering why I didn't mount the bilge pump, why it's kind of just floating around in there, obviously it's not perfectly set just yet. Usually what I do is I take Velcro and I stick it in the bottom over there and I use that to hold the pump down. So the reason that I did it this specific way was because it was just the most functional. This is going to allow me to fill it up and empty it out by being able to move around the bilge pump. So I'm grabbing a bucket right here now to show you guys. You're wondering, well, how do you get the water out of here? Because there's no externals to my boat, right? Like big boats have actual spouts built into the boat that you can drain and do all that kind of stuff. So if you guys watch right here, the reason I used this spout was because I could just wiggle like this and take it right out. So if you want to see how we're going to empty it, Alexis, can you hold that real quick? Just hold that hose right there. Yeah. All I have to do at this point is leave the pump in here, flip the switch, and you got your way to empty it out. And then because this is free in here, if I want to fill it up or rechange my water out on the water, all I have to do is transfer this outside of the boat and then put the hose obviously in here to fill it up. Then when you want to use the aeration system, you put the pump back in place. You just stick this in here and you're good to go. I've used this for tournaments and we never lost a fish. Me and Tony, actually, I, I, you guys just go look at my channel. We fished a two-day tournament and we got a limit every single day and we didn't use any kind of products, anything like that. We just used that cooler and the fish were good to go. They never had any kind of issues. We've never lost one. Yeah, that's pretty much it. This is my homemade bass boat. I built this whole boat said and done for like 1800 bucks. It doesn't get much better than that. I'm talking engine deck like if you guys did not see this boat build you need to hit the link down below and just watch how i built this whole thing out this is just one more step to being able to go farther with this thing i'm getting rid of the big boat because i just can't afford it right now so for me to fish local tournaments on electric lakes and stuff this is literally going to get it done and what's cool about this too if you guys are wondering about like it leaking and stuff like this i'm going to actually build a top flat for that so we don't have to worry about that in the future but again we're not going to be mobbing around in this boat so ideally if i had a you know a big engine on the back of this thing where i was waking around this probably wouldn't work but because i am just doing little electric lakes or using this little five horsepower it's going to be just fine and uh, i didn't want to go anything bigger than this for weight reasons like this boat's already slow as it is so now i gotta get this thing out of my friend's garage He's at work right now. I got to get the four wheelers and stuff back in here. But by the way, if you guys are wondering what this is, you're going to be seeing that pretty soon. I know a lot of you guys are probably like, what the heck is going on? But yeah, you guys know that I just took on a new job at Ketchco. So that's kind of what that ordeal is. But one more thing that I left out, I don't think I told you guys, I actually screwed this bin in too. So it is screwed in here, 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 and here. So this thing is not going anywhere. It is sturdy. And honestly, for 20 bucks, guys, it's solid. Now, if you guys wanted to purchase everything yourself, I think this would be about 40 bucks. I paid about $20 for the pump, and then somewhere around another $20 for all the little pieces that I used to install it. I used very minimal tools, as you guys saw. I don't have any of my work stuff that I'm used to having, but my buddy had enough to get it done. So use what you guys can. Be careful. Don't do anything dumb. This was just another DIY project for those of you who have John Boats. I know a lot of you guys have been watching this video. I'm getting a lot of love on this John Boat build. Or I should say this deep V build because people are telling me that this isn't actually a John Boat. I know. I know it's not actually a John Boat, but hey, whatever, you know, it helps get the views. I know that sounds kind of dirty, but like it's true. So with all that being said, it is 1.30 in the morning. I actually have to fish a tournament tomorrow. So you guys are going to be seeing that in the next video that I post. I'm going to be fishing a tournament against a few other YouTubers with this rig right here. So if you guys want to see this thing fully functioning with fish in it, just hit the subscribe button and stay tuned for the next video. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.